what if God has assigned you to change people's life and that is a success that he has given to you? That is a blessing that he has given to you. Do not forget, we are not serving God because of material things. Hallelujah. We're not serving God because of material things. If it's not because of material things, there's no need to be here. Amen. Because there's another one believers that are too rich. Amen. That has money. Now we're not serving God because of money. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. There's another one believers that does not believe in God. And they are not into, they did not source their wealth from the powers of darkness. They are just living, but they are making it. There are a lot of great people that are out there. They do not believe in God, they do not believe in Sagoma, they do not believe in witch doctor, but they are making it cash. So if we are here because of money, there's no need to be here. We are here to be successful based on the gift that God has given to us. What and what are these gifts? I still want to remind you, it is an everlasting gift, not the gift that perishes. It is an everlasting assignment that every one of us needs to cross out. Now, what are you doing? We come to church, we praise God, we pray that our will be protected, covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. You pray for your job. We go out there, we keep our husband for money. We need it that we went to the church. That's why our business was prosper. We need it that we went to the church. That's why we want to get promotion at work. We need it that we will prosper in whatever we do because we went to the church. No! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. I still want to tell you, money is good. But prosperity depends on who you are. Being limitless, a life of limitless. A life that flows like the wind. You know, a wind is every wind. Is it not true? The air, the life that flows like the air, that cannot be cut up, that cannot be held, that cannot be delayed, that cannot be stagnated. Why do you look so down? Is it a rising? to achieve what God is aiming for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So do not remain down. Do you hear that? Do not remain down and stop reducing the volume of your life with your mentality. And not the force has reduced the volume of their life. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? How do you know that there's a party somewhere in your street? How do you know there's a party? I'm talking about it in our school. By hearing a serious noise, really if you start hearing serious noise, you will begin to be stressed, not because of the noise that started. You begin to be stressed, wondering when will this noise end? You know, you become stressed that you are going to sleep on top of this noise. You know, sometimes they will make noise till after 12 midnight. Immediately, I hear noise in my sleep that I don't work it. I am worried about midnight. There is a lot. Hallelujah. Now, you hear noise in your sleep, you will know there's a party. It's not true. Immediately, you hear that noise, you hear there's a party. My dear, you need to start a party of your life. It's time people know who you are. It's time you just start making a very loud sound. It's time to give the God in you start announcing the sound. When they hear the sound, what is the next thing you will think in? That's a party. What is the sound of your gift? Like when you get in suburbs, you dare not make noise. When you make noise, your numbers will not come. They are the one that we call police to come and then can you please reduce the volume? Your neighbors are complaining. Amen. Mm. Neighbors are complaining. Who are your neighbors now? I was just speaking in the because I was still gonna go by there. Enemies have become our neighbors. Calling police for us to reduce the volume of our lives. The guess thing that we're intimidated to feel solo. Ashamed. What is it that we keep us now? 
It's so what do you tell all more police to tell them to reduce the volume? Well, let us pretend that our spiritual life must be like so we do now. You don't understand me. That's gonna be a celebration upon your life. When this gift inside of you is not being limited in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you are looking at Jesus Christ, the book of Hebrews chapter Book of Hebrews chapter 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 two. If we read from verse nine, if we read from verse nine. He said, but we do see Jesus, listen to this so as I read your right? but we do see Jesus who was made lower than the angels for a little while. By taking on the limitations of humanity. Amen. Are you in the book of Hebrews chapter 2? Chapter 2, verse 9. He said, I am saying to you, no matter how down or low you think you may be. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. When we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, by asking, by taking on the limitations of humanity, crowned with glory and honor because of his suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, extended to sinners, he might experience death for the sins of everyone. For the sins of everyone, who am I? Okay, 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 okay. Yes, verse 10. For it was fitting for God, that is an act of worry of his divine nature, that he, for whose sake all things and through whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the author and the founder of the salvation perfect to suffer. The kind of bringing us into maturity to experience necessary for his perfections you know, to equip us for what he has given us. If my Bible they don't read the book. So if you read from verse 9 to 10, the Bible is telling us that even Jesus Christ himself was made a little lower. Isn't it? Lower than the angels. But the Bible said for a little while. I want to get it from that side. Read it for me, verse 9. But we, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the sufferings of death. Okay, hold it there. This one is saying, but we see, but we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels, for a little while. Did you see? That your faith that is not working out does not mean that it will never work out again. Hallelujah. This thing that they keep on saying, high, high class people. Who are the high class? Sometimes you will see somebody that you call a high class by not knowing that they have wisdom more than the person. By not knowing that they have patience more than the person. By not knowing that your brain is times 20 of that person. Hey, this high class people. Most of the people that are not educated, they say big boys. Have you ever heard it? This one's are what? Big boys. And I'm not guilty as I don't know where you normally got the big girls. Hallelujah. I'm talking about when you see people that are making it, you become intimidated. You hinder yourself so badly that they look as if God does not. As if God never existed in you. You see how we feel with power. And we look down on ourselves as if God never existed. Listen to yourself. And still build up and bring back the confidence. There's nothing like high class. Praise the Lord. I know that English call them high class out there. But in the kingdom of God, we can call it a higher life. And the higher life ought not to intimidate. No, we are not supposed to be intimidated by a higher life. Why are we following God? Why are we serving God? Is He not the God of higher life? Why aren't you look down on yourself because God is high? You are serving God, you never look down on yourself, but when you see people making it, you start looking down on yourself. You start being intimidated. Praise the Lord. You know what I love about you? You speak good English. You can read and write. 
You can cast them up. But I have seen people on YouTube, on social media that cannot speak English but they are billionaires. And then you come with your good English. You still call yourself a low life. Hallelujah. You already have good things. God has given you a privilege. First of all, if I can come, God has given you a good a, a privilege to achieve, first of all, physically multinational language. As long as you achieve that thing, you can take it anywhere. What is that you're doing as a Christian? Being in the spirit. You're always in the spirit. Oh God, why are you not answering me? Let us start from here. Oh God, why are you not answering me? Do you answer me that my God? Father, why are you not answering me? I was in the church waiting for you to come. So you can come for me to answer you you are at home. Under your blanket with your pajamas. Till 12 o'clock. So I was waiting for you to say something, but I didn't see you say anything. You are not in me. So I'm saying, why am I answering you? Because you are yourself. I know that they call me most of names. But your names, calling, can never define me. Your imagination can never define me. Your gossip can never define me. Your negativity, thoughts, can never define me. This is how you're supposed to live your life. Nothing can define you except you by the Spirit of God. Amen. Imagine you want to be with some friends. They say, ah, you're not our type, I'm on our level. Immediately they tell you are not our type and our level. Just say, I understand. Thank you for reminding me, I even forgot. I forgot that I am higher than all of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I forgot that I am higher than all of you. Why did the apostle call you? At the work? Why did you have the the private company? Why did the apostle employ you? Your boss cannot do what you are doing in that company. Yeah. Although they are the founder, but they don't have the energy. Mm. And then you are still working. You don't have to start up with your life. But what I'm trying to say is that most of you, you have been employed. The people that employ you cannot do what you are doing there. They don't stress their brain. The way you try to scatter your brain after you are looking for whom to transfer their direction at home. A very good boss, a very good boss that created a company, they appreciate their staffs a thousand times. Tell people if you have a good boss, you know what I'm talking about. They will tell you, I did this because of you. I get this one because of you. Without you, there's no other than me here. Don't you think that most of them don't have their qualification? I opened a company here, I will have a marketing department, I will have this department, I have this department. Can only me, do I even have what it takes to control this department? No. They still employ you as a manager. Why can't they manage it? They still employ you as a financial manager. Hello? Why can't they manage it? And then you are still looking down on yourself. I don't have what it takes. You didn't have what it takes and they are looking for you. You didn't have what it takes and they will tell you. Most of you, what you want to go to is from a certain place, they will tell you, please, you, can, you want to increase your salary, don't go. It's only the arrogant and proud ones that will still insult you while working for you. But the good ones will appreciate you, knowing that they are making use of your strength, making use of your gift, making use of your visions. Then you buy your selling your visions out. It's time to come back and rise. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was born. And after that, his blood life, according to people, does not define him. Whatever people see will never define you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In fact, I still want to advise you live the life of I don't care. You owe nobody any explanation. Amen. You owe yourself an explanation why you're not making it. So that you can be able to start afresh. So that you can be able to rise again. So that you can be able to think again. Why am I not making it, brother? I'm not making it because of this. Uh, okay. Oh, brother. In fact, go to the mirror and look at yourself. Explain to the person that you see on the mirror the reason why you're not making it. Then the person on the mirror will still talk to you. You don't know 
for anybody has any explanation. <laughs> hey, the reason why I cannot do this is because they will. They, they what? They will. That's why you cannot do it. They will. I still want to talk to someone. Like the reason why most of you cannot rise in this ministry is because of the fellow you want to be in this church. Hey, if I do it, I won't raise it. Shut up! Shut up! If I do it, now what would they say? If you go to work, now what would they say? Why do you go to work? If I do it, that's why most of you with your potentials, you can't even contribute to the gospel of Christ in this ministry. You can't even contribute to the strength. You are hiding. They will. If God uprooted that seed that He gave to you and planted it elsewhere, He will regret it. Uh-huh. Understand and know that you are always afraid of that which is more powerless than you. Amen? Amen. Christians, this uh, is almost the same thing. It's almost the same thing. When you begin to understand that you are always afraid, everybody is afraid of which that which is powerless than them. If I do this, the enemy will kill me. If I serve God, the kingdom of darkness will come after me. No, I don't want to serve God. If I serve God, the kingdom of darkness, kingdom of what? You call it darkness. And you say you don't want them to come after you. You are a light, though. Mm-hmm. Let's start from the from the from the from from serving God. You don't want to what? Serve God. Because the kingdom of darkness will, will bite you. Bite you. Bite you. Excuse me. Bite you. Like, excuse me, bite you. Is there anybody that is the size of a cow here? <laughs> Nobody, right? You can never be the size of a cow. You go. <laughs> if you have the size of a cow, and if you can have a cow and have the power to slaughter them for meat, The kingdom of darkness is as the size of a cow. We have the power to kill animals, right? And eat them. Most of them can also hurt you. Most of them can also fight back, isn't it? But we still kill them. So they're just like that. The lot of animals in our farm. We kill the one we want. So why must we be afraid of the animals? Because you are the one that protect them and raise them. I know that most of your eyes are not able to understand what I'm talking about. What must you be afraid of the animals because you are the one that bred them. You, you bred them. You kept them. You choose who you want to kill. What am I trying to say? What must you be afraid of the enemies? Was it not God in you that created them? So why must you be afraid? Because even that God is no longer in you. We become afraid of that, afraid of that, which we are more powerful than. Which is powerless than us. God was the one who changed the Lucifer out, he remained the and that is not was it. And you are praying. If God has called you to live a deeper life, and you are living a shallow life, that deeper life is waiting for you. Because you are afraid of what the enemies can go do to you or might do to you. Amen. Mm-hmm. The same God that tells us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. When you go out for war, do not be afraid of their faces. And then you are, you don't want to live a deeper life. You don't want to inherit a deeper life. You don't want to acquire a deeper life because you are afraid. Afraid of what? What is it that happens to me that will never happen to you? But the worst part of it is that when it happens to you, why you are living in a shadow like all in the name of fear, your own will be worse. Nothing is worse than somebody that is not prepared facing challenges. Amen. Amen. So if you keep on reading your Bible, you still remember, we are still in the book of Hebrews chapter 2. If you read from verse 13, and again, he said, My trust. And confident. My trust and confident hope will be placed in him. And again, here I am. 
And the children whom God has given me, if you keep on it to verse, uh, from verse 13 to verse 16, let's not just read it, but go through your Bible when you get home for those of you who read your Bible. Try to understand this. Check very well. As they want to talk about, let to analyze everything that is in front of you. Whatever that I am scared of, are they powerful more than me? Did you hear that? Whatever that you are afraid of, are they powerful more than you? Praise the Lord. Don't be afraid of that which is powerless than you. Analyze every situation, every confrontation, every encounter that you will have. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know that most of you, when your boss start, start intimidating you at what you want to resign? Some of you don't need to resign. There's a greater glory that is coming. Just the enemy is using your boss to intimidate you. They can delete you, they will tell you you are nothing. You are nonsense. You don't know what you are doing. Don't mind them. We do not resign because you are being intimidated. Without the word. Amen. A lot of people left the church because they were intimidated. Amen. What is your problem? Do not get that. Or do not easily be intimidated. Mm-hmm. You have learned something from your learning over here, please. So when you go home, you still read up of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Do you still remember that? Do you still remember that? God has not what? He has not given the spirit of fear. If you become afraid, you will be limited. We are talking about the limitations of humanity. If you become afraid, you will never make it. If you are afraid in everything that you desire to do, that God has given you to do, you will not make it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Imagine when you go to a place and start to be you, how heavy is that? Can I say something? Man, I don't forget it. Be a little man and do not forget it. And I pray that God will give me wisdom to say this. Every first intimidation or confrontation, or can I say, every first confrontation that you will encounter based on intimidation, the first confrontation to intimidate you is the most fearful person. That fight in seven is already fighting. How many of you started facing before you came to church? It is, immediately you were born, you were already facing it. You are feeling the heat. If you are here and you have never asked this question, then I need to receive from you the power of God. How many of you here, I know that I have already asked, why is the devil fighting against me? The time you are not going to walk in. Even now that you're not working yet. Now you're not yet making it. I got to think there's nothing good for your life. But you still ask, I don't have a car, I don't have a house, I don't have anything, I don't, I don't have nothing. Why are they still fighting against me? If you have asked that question, why you are alone, can you say amen? <laughs> Every first confrontation to intimidate you is the most fearful one. They know who we are. That's why when you receive, you somebody say, hey, I'll give you on your own, bro. You are sitting down, bro. You are not fighting anybody. You have never confronted anybody. As long as you say, hey, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll show you what I am. Then there's something about you that the enemy is scared of. Amen. So that's why they have to come before you discover your strength. The enemy comes after us before we discover our strength. Now, you know, let's say you have a great potential at work, and your boss, a manager, a team leader is always on your case. Just know that there's something that they didn't want to oppress. Did not walk away from intimidation. Goliath and saw that the Israelites were the covenant people. And they didn't know them. They didn't know that there was a strength in their midst. Can you say there's always a strength in the midst of me to Christ Jesus? There's always a strength inside of me 
in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Every confrontation, if people start confronting you for nothing, from today, if you come back to your senses, I know that you are human beings, sometimes you lose it. If they fight, you fight back. I will leave you. You will never do anything. Will, you will never. Immediately they, do, they say, I will leave with you. Come back to your senses and know, oh, okay. There's something you are afraid of. That's why in the church, ladies and gentle women. <laughs> I know you want me to say gentlemen. Ladies and gentle women. Immediately you see that sister, you start to come sit behind her in the Immediately they start to tell you your case. That's something about it. Yeah. And you ask, what did I do? Mm. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> like sometimes I laugh, people will just get angry with me. Start dealing with me from now. I laugh. But that I'm laughing does not mean that they will come close to me and step on my toes. So sister, my dear sisters, you just start dealing with you, stop asking, what did I do? Just know that there's something in me that is intimidating it. Intimidating these ones. Because whoever that confronts first is the most fearful person. Yeah. Whoever that confront first is most what? When you confront people first, they start like confronting them out of fear and out of guilty conscience. That's why no matter whatever they say about you, they ask. God has given us what? The spirit of fear, uh -huh. but of power and of love and of the sound mind. Power, love, sound mind. You have, it. you have the power, you have the love, you have sound mind. Is your mind sound? The only thing that your mind, mind is sound at is say amen, amen. You speak in tongues, you know how to speak in tongues. You call fire to one and a half times. Shouting fire seven times will not help you without you being useful to yourself. Eh? Pastor's prayer will not help you. Amen. Pastor's prayer can't help you except you become useful to yourself. Amen. There's no need to carry water and enter the garden or family life without germination. Of a seed. When you plant the seed and it does not germinate, what and why are you wasting your time? When you pour water there, the water will just dry up. But when the seed germinates, when you pour water, you know why you are pouring your water on the ground. And you will continue and you will be tempted and you will be attracted. You will be forced to keep up pouring water. So, Pastor's prayer will not help for those of you who are lazy. You don't have the sound mind. The next one. God has made you the, the, the sound of my love. Just walk with it. You are blessed with it. The other one is you were planned before the foundation of the earth. Your God knows that somebody like you will manifest, will exist. Somebody like you will be born. When you expect a newborn at home, when the time is approaching, what do you do? You buy a God bed. You buy baby stuff. Isn't it? You plan, you buy basis. And packing the back, right? Why do you because you are expecting it? That is the preparation of God before you were born. God has prepared everything for us to survive. Before we are born. First of all, let us start from human being. God did not make you blind. Is it true? First of all, you are not blind. You can see. Even with your inner eyes, you can see your vision. Do I get a sense? Everything is in order. Hallelujah. Now we don't have the blessings of God that we need to manifest. It has been prepared like somebody that is expecting a newborn. That's why I said before the foundation of the earth, you were all from the Ephesians chapter what? Chapter 1, verse 25. You were planned before. You were planned. Your life has been planned. Like I said, my life was already planned. Before I was born, my future was already planned. Before I was born, yes, I know the plans and the thoughts I have for you. He already made a plan that this person, that this person is coming, are going to be this. That's why if you check that way, most people that discovered their talent today, most of them discovered it, they were privileged. They discovered it, they discovered it at a very young age. What is it that you have discovered? 
May God help you to rediscover what you have left so that you may run with your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your life was planned before you were For those people, you see, if you're out there or you see somebody out there saying that my life is not making sense, stop looking at family background again. Family background. Can somebody say family background? <laughs> family background. You look at your father, your father is not making it, your father is not making it, and you think that your life is not planned. Before you were born, there was a bed. There were very snows, isn't it? So I, I cannot look at my parents and say, my life is in a mess. My life is shattered like that of my family. If you keep on looking at your family, you will not make it. Praise the Lord. If you keep on looking at your background, you will not make it. So I can't stop looking at where you are coming from in a negative way. Look at where you are coming from with the hope. Knowing that if God can take me this far, He's going to finish that which He started with me. He's going to finish that which He started with me. Amen. So, your life has been planned, was planned, and the plans of God can never be changed. No power, no hand can change the plan of God for your life. But they can still change you from God's plan. That's why you take that well. Most of us are not following the direction that Almighty God has made for them. Do you know that? A lot of people who just want to follow God's direction, a lot of people just want to follow the way that they know that God has created. The only thing, 97% of us are thinking now is to get a job and a paid salary. You know, job. People go to church to get a job. Hallelujah. I still want you to remember today that there's a job, a whole lot of job, a whole lot of work inside of you. A work that needs to manifest the God's glory. Are you with me? There's a whole lot of job. You are working for a job for 5,000. There's a million dollar job inside of you. Seeking the face of God. Is kingdom and every other thing shall be added. Not paid. Not paid. Hello? Not paid. But what? Add. <laughs> it is a it is a pay. What payment finishes. It's not true. When does a payment it finishes? Payment is limited. But whatever is being added, additional, every other thing shall be added. You wouldn't pay him, but they will add. Add him. Add him. Just the way they normally add some money in your salary, but it's finished. But it adds. It adds. Praise the Lord. So, with all this, you were planned before the foundation. That's why you must remember this in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. I know if you have been following this message, do you remember how we started? And you will know how we are stopping right now. Colossians chapter 1 verse. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3. Like I said, if God is above, the God who lives in me is above, why would I be below? Why would my life be so low? Why would I keep on calling myself a low class? Why would I not? Why, why would I understand that there's a higher life that I am connected to? God is the God of higher life and God is higher life. And I am of a higher life, not of a low life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you read Colossians chapter. You have to pray for verse 1 to 3. It says to you, if you embrace Jesus, seek for the things that is above. The things that is above, not the things that are below. Repeat after me. Say the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am highly lifted. I am highly lifted. Above nations of the earth. Above nations. Like I say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Beyond limitation. Beyond limitation. My life shall no longer be limited. 
I will go beyond the boundaries. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will overcome every impossibilities. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am a conqueror. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am a winner. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am successful. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have the power to move my life forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am not below the earth, but I am above the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, failure is not my portion. In the name of Jesus Christ, to the glory of God, my visions are expanded. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever that I touch and I shall touch, I will be blessed and they shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is nothing too difficult nor difficult for God Almighty. Therefore, every difficulty in my life are terminated. In the name of Jesus Christ, my life, my life, my destiny will begin to make a way. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is no more setback upon my life. Did you hear that? When you say this, you feel good. When you say this, you are prophesied. When you say this, then that I cry to Jesus, nothing can oppress our world. Your world is bent to whom you are. You stop allowing the enemy to speak over your life. You will not make it. Uh, you are useless. Uh, your word. I pray that those people that call you useless, may they wait. Because you will be useful in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So when you read the book of Confessions, you will understand that with the prayer, with what I have said with you, with the confession that you have just made, let me tell yourself that I will continue to appear with Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? I will continue to with Christ Jesus. When I go with the Lord Jesus, in the mountain, I am the way. I appear. Then to appear with him. Sometimes you speak to yourself. I disappear by appear with Christ Jesus. I get every evil forces. I get every limitation. Father, you say to a man, be fruitful and do what? Multiply. Every limitation against my multiplication. You speak to them. I appear to you. Every power that is delaying me, I appear to you. Whatever, whatever, I appear with Christ Jesus, you must bow. And that shall step over you and pass to the glory of God. Because God has assigned me, has created me. Before the foundation of the earth, he knew that I would come. Somebody like me would come. He knew that that's why I must live a life without limitations. God bless you.